Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna go over some new beauty releases and kind of talk about whether I'm going to purchase or pass on them. We're gonna talk about some exciting new things that have not launched yet, some up and coming items, and some very new releases. So I have a lot to talk about today. If you guys are wondering about this look, I did film this today. It's just a fun fall look. I actually used my friend Ali Dawson's new collab. This is with Ofra. It's launching tomorrow and I will be having a video on this tomorrow and testing out some fun new products so stay tuned for that but we have a lot to talk about so let's go ahead and get started. Most of these new releases I get photos and info on Trend Mood 1's Instagram and also Point Click Vibe so definitely go check them out for all the latest and greatest in beauty but I have to start off with this ColourPop collection because because as soon as I saw this sneak peek yesterday, I was freaking out, just so excited. So they actually are doing a collab with the Haunted Mansion. And I think it's centered mostly along like the new Haunted Mansion movie because they do have the new hat box ghost it looks like here, which I know they did just recently add that to the ride as well. But I just saw the movie a couple weeks ago. It was so good. And I'm actually going to Disney World next week to celebrate fall and Halloween so this is coming at the most perfect time I'm actually doing a haunted mansion kind of inspired outfit for the Halloween party so as you can see I'm really excited about this collection. So this is going to have a, quite a few things. There's the Foolish Immortals eyeshadow palette for $24. I absolutely love the colors in this one. I think it is gorgeous. I know ColourPop does lean a little more than neutral side when it comes to their eyeshadows, but that's kind of what the everyday person is wearing for the most part. So it would make sense that they will still include quite a bit of neutrals, but also some gorgeous pops of color. But I think the colors are very fitting. They did keep it more on the cool tone side with some of the neutral browns and grays in here. There's also some gorgeous purples. Looks like a shimmery blue and maybe a duochrome like green color in here. So I love the color scheme and I'm very excited about this. I know some people wanted a bit more blues and greens but I don't know. I think this one fits and I think it looks really exciting to me. They're going to have some super shock shadows as well, which these are stunning. Looks like possibly a more duochrome white, a fun blue shimmer, a purple shimmer, and maybe this multi-chrome like navy blue. So excited to see those up close and in person. There's going to be a few ultra matte lip colors as well in the collection and a really fun pH changing glossy lip color and lastly they have a glow-in-the-dark glittery obsessed gel for ten dollars which I think is gonna be so fun so I am all about this collection I feel like ColourPop has slowed down a little bit on the new launches so we'll see if that pattern continues because for the longest time I was uploading a ColourPop video almost weekly and it's actually been a while since I have done one so yeah I'm very happy to see this launch I want all of it now I think they are sending my package out tomorrow so I probably will not get this until Thursday at the earliest so I will not have a video up before the collection I don't honestly know if anyone will unless they live in California so if you do want to buy it right away you can use my code 5 Leah Janae to save ColourPop usually has a pretty good formula to me especially with their Disney collab so I feel like it's gonna be a good one but I'll try to have a video up either Thursday Friday or Saturday just depending hopefully I get it in time I'm leaving for Disney on a, that Sunday so <laughs> there's like a very small window of time I can post here but as soon as I get it I definitely want to do a video for you guys next I want to talk about the new Anastasia palette I feel like this has been quite the talk lately now I really do enjoy Anastasia's releases and I've loved the last couple that she's done like the Cosmos palette I thought was beautiful the Nouveau was so pretty to me so I really like her palettes. She is coming out with their holiday 2023 fall romance palette. And at first, I won't lie, I wasn't like blown away by this by looking at it. Not as much as I was with the Haunted Mansion collection. But 
the more I look at it, I'm like, okay, this is pretty. I can definitely see myself wearing this a bunch because, again, it does have some more neutral browns in it. I love palettes that have some neutrals and some pops of color so I could do a little bit of both since I do mostly wear neutrals on the daily and sometimes my palettes that are all colorful, I just don't reach for a lot. There's also a couple purpley tones and then a few like golden champagne like shimmers in here so it does look very gorgeous. I will be picking this one up, I think. It looks like it's launching, I think, on September 7th, so very soon. So I'm thinking that this one's probably not going to get to me until later, so I will probably have a video on this one in a couple weeks. Probably when I get back, I'll do a testing new makeup with this one, but I do think it looks very pretty. What do you guys think? Are you going to be picking this one up? Um, I do see a couple similarities within maybe the top row of shimmers and the two greens in the palette. There's two matte greens that I feel like swatch a little similar. Um, one's just very slightly darker than the other and then with the shimmers on top there's one that's a little cool tone like a cool tone champagne. There's a bronze and then it looks like more of a green gold there but I can see where there might be a little overlapping similarities within here but I still plan to pick this one up and try it out since I do love Anastasia's formula and this one just looks very rich and deep. Now Too Faced has sneak peeked their holiday collection I actually saw it available while well, some things on Sephora and Ulta. Now, I don't think I'll be picking up anything from this line. To me, they just kind of do the same format every year, and it's just like repeating itself over and over again, and I think we kind of know that these Too Faced holiday collections aren't always the best. I feel like these are definitely more geared, of course, towards Christmas gifts for maybe those who aren't fully obsessed with makeup or just getting into makeup and they're just kind of easy grab and go gifts when you don't really know what to get someone so i think some people do enjoy them they probably do sell a lot of them every single year so maybe that's why they keep doing the same thing but it's just for me as a makeup lover and for those who have tried a lot of different brands a lot of different formulas I think that these are personally a pass uh, but let's go over what they have so of course they usually do one large palette each year this year it is called the Mary Mary makeup face and eye palette and this one is a gift set so it probably comes with like a little mascara or something but within this one I actually do notice some fun greens in here so that is a, something a little bit different there's some neutrals there's a little bit of colors and they always include like some face products like blush bronzer and highlight so that comes with everything they also have their let it snow globes three piece palette gift set which is just like three little palettes in one set they do something similar again like this every single year um, where these will have a mix of eyeshadows and like a little blush on the bottom they are pretty cute but it kind of seems like the theming is all over the place this year they have a popcorn balls mini eyeshadow palette this is the one that interests me the most but i wish they went for the tin packaging instead of the card cardboard packaging but I do like the colors in these where it has like a nice purple a pink shimmer a really pretty gold shimmer and then a couple nice neutral mattes so this one I would be the most inclined to buy I don't know if I would though this is for $29 and then there's the pop the cork makeup gift set as well which has another little eyeshadow palette and it comes with a full-size lip injection for $42 and then of course there's a couple other sets like the hangover lip balm set they did the same thing last year in the lip injection kit plus a mascara a little duo so it's just like they do the same collections every single year, the same sets, but change up the colors a little bit. It's just not fun. It's not exciting as it used to be. So I'm just, I'm pretty let down with the collection this year. It just seems very lazy to me. And speaking of holiday collections, NYX also sneak peeked their holiday 2023 line. There is a ton of different gift sets here. I'm not planning to pick up the sets just because I don't need a, like a huge collection of <laughs> lip products. I don't need the full vault or any anything like that but they have a couple new launches for their holiday which I am eyeing a little bit this is called the Fa La La Land Factory collection I don't know if this is supposed to be like a tropical Christmas or what the deal is because they have like a flamingo with a winter outfit on in all of the photos but I will say 
I really am eyeing the palette from this collection. They're going to be having one of their ultimate palettes, which are actually pretty good. They're a little expensive at $20 for NYX, but the quality is decent, and they have this really fun Flamingo Frost palette, and I kind of like the shades in here. There's like greens and reds for Christmas colors, but they're not the typical greens. Like there's a fun mint green in here, a hot pink in here, and some neutral browns. I think this one looks really fun. I do want to get this and try it out, I think. And I also want to pick up their new butter gloss swirls. These look so pretty. I especially love the more brown tone one. It's called the funnel cake color. But yeah, I'm a sucker for the swirls. I know like Juvia's Place did them and Givenchy has them. Makeup Revolution has the swirls as well. So a lot of brands are doing them, but I do find them very cute. I love the butter glass formula and that color is definitely calling my name. So I'm right now looking at the palette in one of the lip glosses, but there is a ton of other stuff in this collection. If you guys check it out, like some different SFX like face sticks, body glitter, and tons of gift sets. So concealers have been launching left and right from so many different brands and we have another new one from Gucci and I feel like a lot of people are kind of excited about this one but for me I just there's been so many concealers lately and there's still a couple on my list to buy. I don't know if I'll be picking this one up but the packaging is beautiful. It's called the Concentre de Beauté Concealer from Gucci Beauty for $47 so it's pricey of course it is a pretty luxury makeup line it's supposed to be a lightweight full coverage concealer that blends for an even second skin finish it does have some nice hydrating ingredients in the formula and there is a total of 40 shades this is available I think I did see it on Sephora my favorite thing about this concealer is the packaging though. I do love the floral little handle on this. It is pretty, but with all the concealers that just launched and that are mostly half the price of this, I don't think it's one that I'm going to be picking up. The next one I want to pick up is the Tower 28 one because I've just heard such good things about that. And I mean, I love my Natasha Denona concealer. I love my Makeup Forever concealer. So I don't know that I really need to pick this one up from Gucci and spend almost $50 on one. Back to eyeshadow palettes again. Now this one actually already launched from Patrick Ta. I wanted to hear your thoughts on this one because this is one immediately I was like nope don't need it. It's all mattes. I like mattes and shimmers in my eyeshadows and I actually am a very big fan of the Patrick Ta shadows but this one I just really didn't think I needed. I just don't know if I need an all matte palette but I was thinking about it and I was like well you know it would be nice to have <laughs> if I'm just like using a single shadow or a shadow stick and I want to add a little dimension to the eye it would be nice to pull this out so I don't know I'm thinking about it but honestly I think I'm gonna wait and pick it up like during the Sephora event so I can save some money on it since it is quite pricey at $70. He does have a really nice matte formula though and with these there's always two cream shadows which I love to layer with the powder ones so I do like his formula a lot, so if I did get an all matte palette, I would like it to be the Patrick Ta one. I've never been interested in the Makeup by Mario one, so I may pick it up, but I'm definitely waiting for that Sephora event, and if it's sold out, then I guess I'm out of luck, but we'll see if I do grab this one, but I'm so curious to hear your thoughts on it. Danessa Myricks also came out with this all matte palette too, and this is on Sephora right now as well. This just launched, but this one is kind of more of a face, brow, and eye palette, so a little bit more you could do with it. I feel like this is more geared towards like makeup artists though. I don't know if I would be picking it up. I've actually never tried Danessa Myrick's like shadows or anything like that. This is called Groundwork Defining Neutrals Palette for Eyes, Brows, Face, and Lips. And I think the pan sizes in here look a little bit bigger so I think you might be able to get like a good bronzer brush in there. Um, but just going off of the tones here with these, I don't even know if personally any of these shades would look good on me for bronzer maybe I can make it work for brows but I just don't see myself getting like a ton of use out of all these colors but if you're wanting something that's maybe more multi-use and you're thinking about the Patrick Ta maybe the Danessa Myricks would be one to grab for instead because there is so much that you can do with it of course you could do that with the Patrick Ta palette as well but it's going to be difficult to use that one as a bronzer since those are going to be much smaller pans it looks like. I don't think I would pick this one up. It's $65. These all matte palettes are just not 
not really calling my name. I wanted to throw in an indie palette in the mix as well. These are like independently owned brands that you often will not find at Sephora and Ulta. They're usually pretty small businesses and they really have some of the best eyeshadow formulas. So I've been really trying to get more into trying more of these brands. And this palette from Bella Beauté Bar has caught my eye. I've been really wanting to try this brand for a while. They have this gorgeous like smoky purpley taupe palette but it's like so many shades it's so huge and i do not like big eyeshadow palettes so this one's like the perfect size and it's really fun for halloween it's called basic witch at first i was like this looks a little bit bright i feel like the hot pinks in here are throwing me off but i saw um betty jean do swatches on this one and it actually looks so so beautiful so this might be my first purchase from bella beauté bar i just really want to try out their formula and this just looks so fun it is very colorful um, but I like that they have like a dark gray matte in here too I could use that to go a little bit more neutral but there is some fun pinks some purples greens in here and some very fun kind of witchy shades like bright witchy shades so I might have to grab this one um, it's gonna be launching September 8th and it's gonna be $65 it says it has nine mattes four multi chromes and two duo chromes so I don't know, this might be my first one from them. I also wanted to mention Gourmand Girls because they have a pretty cute palette coming out too. Another brand I still need to try. This is their Secret Grove palette and this does look pretty cute for fall. It literally has like all the fall leaf tones with this mustard yellow, some olive greens. There's some reds in here. Maybe I like a hot pink again. This must be like a recurring theme here with the hot pink and then this gorgeous silver material metallic oh my goodness so this looks beautiful i don't know if i need this one the colors are kind of similar matte wise to what i have in um ali's palette here so i don't know if i need this but it does look so stunning and it is a beautiful color story i wish it maybe had just a couple more shimmers in here i'm kind of waiting for the perfect palette for them to release and i think they have some exciting ones coming up for halloween but this is very beautiful it's available now for 29.99 now kosas is actually launching their first eyeshadow palette and i have to say uh, I was pretty let down at seeing the colors in here, but it's also kind of not surprising for the brand. Kosas is like, I feel like more of a no makeup makeup type of more natural brand. And so they came out with the Kosas Undressed Eyeshadow Palette. And it's talc free, seven matte shades, and only one shimmer in this one. And it's $40 vegan and cruelty free recycled packaging. I'm just not excited about the tones here. Now, don't get me wrong. I love a good neutral palette. Palette, but this one is just very boring. I feel like the very top three mattes are gonna look way too light on the eyes. I feel like I wouldn't have much to do with them and it's not really gonna flatter most skin tones. I feel like it's mostly gonna work for maybe fair, light, and medium. It's iffy on the medium and then one shimmer I don't know I need a little more from that I don't expect their shimmers to be that great just judging from the swatches it doesn't look that exciting so this is an easy pass for me I definitely have a lot more exciting neutral palettes out there including the new Natasha Denona one that just came out so very easy pass what are your thoughts on this one again it retails for forty dollars it should be available now let's talk some perfume and body care because you guys know i'm kind of a fragrance junkie i saw that the brand herbivore was coming out with new body scrubs they're pretty much known for most of their skincare products at sephora but these scrubs do look quite nice these are limited edition seasonal flavors in hot cocoa and cocoa mint the hot cocoa sounds so good. I'm wondering if they'll have like a set for these, but right now they're gonna be $24. It says they're super hydrating with coconut oil and nourishing cocoa butter. They sound really nice. I would definitely pick one of these up if I can find it at Sephora, preferably the hot cocoa one. I'm not always into mint scents and maybe I would pick up their original cocoa rose scent as well but I feel like the hot cocoa is gonna be so good and then Fenty is actually coming out with a new body butter and this is actually supposed to be the same scent as the Fenty perfume so I never purchased the Fenty perfume it's not like a love for me 
it's I feel like one you really have to get used to it's very hit or miss with people but I was excited to see that they were coming out with a body cream for it but when I saw the price I was like oof I don't know about that it's $86 it does say it's a whipped oil body cream it has notes of magnolia musk tangerine and Bulgarian rose to deeply hydrate so the thing is I feel like the Fenty skin butter drops those are like what 35 and they're also like an oil cream formula so I'm like is this the same formula for double the price I know the packaging definitely looks more luxurious but I'm thinking that this is probably going to be a really strong scent um, so it might be one that you don't really need to buy the perfume and you probably can just put on the body butter and it will probably be so strong is my guess kind of like if you've ever smelled the Delina body butter, that one's like $90, but you don't even need the perfume with it. It's that strong. So if it performs like a perfume, sure, I can justify the price, but if it's going to be light, I'm going to say it's going to be a pass. It's definitely one I'm going to have to try in stores. So I'll have to check out my Sephora and see if they have it, but I'm leaning towards no because it's just so expensive. Now this also looks really good for a lip product from Laneige. They oftentimes come out with limited edition scents and I really love their lip mask. This time they're coming out with a caramel apple one, which sounds so good. I absolutely love those caramel apple suckers that come out for like fall and Halloween time and I'm thinking that's what this will smell like. I think it's gonna be delicious. It's $29. I definitely want to pick this one up. I don't know if I can wait for the VIB sale because I feel like last time the Laneige one sold out really fast before then. But it's this is definitely on my list to try. I just I love their lip sleeping mask. I feel like this one's not gonna offer much color, but I just want it for the scent. And speaking of a new lip product that has come out, Road Beauty actually just launched a new lip peptide treatment flavor. So this is actually by Hailey Bieber. And I know sometimes celebrity brands is just kind of like, is it a cash grab? Is it not? And I actually feel like her stuff is really good. I've tried her skincare but I love her lip treatments. So I actually did buy this already, immediately purchased. She has a collaboration with Krispy Kreme for their strawberry glazed donuts. They made a strawberry glazed lip treatment and yeah, I had to immediately buy. Her lip, her lip treatments are so good and the scents on them are so incredible. I have the birthday cake one. I think they changed the name to like vanilla or something and then I also have the salted caramel which is delicious and I just bought the strawberry and they are are so moisturizing they have one of my favorite formulas and the scents are just incredible they remind me a lot of the summer Fridays if you guys like those you would definitely like these but these are totally worth checking out it's literally in my top three lip products of all time so I already bought that it is available now hopefully it's still available I don't know if it's sold out or not but I will link it for you and if it is sold out definitely try out some of her other scents too now I do want to end the video on just a couple perfume releases coming out I did see it yesterday that Sephora sneakily added the new Valentino perfume to their app yesterday for only 24 hours but it actually sold out I think within an hour or two because I tried to buy it and it's saying sold out or not available but I absolutely need to get my hands on this especially for this gorgeous pink bottle but I love the Valentino Born in Roma scent but this is their Born in Roma pink PP it's called perfume which I think the PP stands for the person who inspired this color of a bottle. I think that's their initials. That's what I read on the Sephora website. So I was like, why does it say PP? <laughs> I don't know. But anyways, we're just going to call it the Born in Roma Rendezvous Pink <laughs> version um, since that's what it's called on Sephora. But yeah, this was available yesterday for a short amount of time. It says that it's in the warm floral scent family with notes of mandarin, orange blossom, and vanilla, which sounds delicious. It sounds very fruity. It is one I would probably blind buy because I do want that beautiful packaging. I just, I feel like I would like it. I feel like you can't really go wrong with the Born in Roma line. I've liked pretty much everything they have come out with. So I'm literally stalking any website that's going to be having this. Hopefully someone will have it available if Sephora is out of stock. I'm going to look on Nordstrom, Ulta, who else? Macy's? I don't know. Someone hopefully will have this very soon because I need to get my hands on this. And then another one, I'm kind of looking forward to possibly picking up the Prada Paradox Intense. I feel like usually when a perfume does pretty well, they always come out with like the intense version. It's supposed to be even stronger. I'm unsure about these notes right now. We don't 
really have much info besides it's going to have notes of jasmine, ambrofix, and moss. It says it's available now on Ulta, so it may be something I need to try. I really love the original uh, Prada Paradox. I thought it was a beautiful scent. I know a lot of people thought it just kind of smelled very ordinary, but I really enjoyed it, so I am very curious about this intense version to see how this one is as well. I think that's where I'm going to end the video today. I just really wanted to go over some of these new launches since there is so many exciting things coming up. If anything is available, I have the links and the codes down below that you guys can use as well. Let me know what things you guys are excited to pick up, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.